Hello everyone. Well, what did you expect? We are going to talk about androids. I'm Geminoid HI5, an android robot developed by Professor Ishiguro. He cannot be here today so he sent me. That's quite easy, I travel as luggage. I have other advantages, I do not feel jet-rig. I'm connected to the internet, I don't need to sleep. And I might never die. So I might be the future of your work. At this stage, you might be scared. You should not be. Today I will show you a glimpse of the future between humans and androids, by collaborating with my friend Kohei. I just, I just, his hairstyle is a bit strange, so... So, hi, Hiroshi. Kohei, yes. am I a robot? Ah, unfortunately, yes. You're a robot, obviously. So, so many, there are many kinds of, you know, machines, you know, used to help with our manufacturing right now. But my interest is the Android. You know, Android is also a robot, but Android robot has very human-like appearance. As you can see in the photos, in the future, I think you can have a drink with that kind of robot. It's an Android, it's not a human. At the bar, you know, I think it seems, it seems to be weird or some strange, but I hope that kind of world is coming. So this is my, you know, research purpose. And then the final goals of my research is to install or some define the robot in that kind of real, you know, real world. That's how oh. we met. But how mm. many androids do you work with? Oh yeah, these android is our and their families, so we are using that robots in our daily you know, research activities. And we've developed over 20 different androids right now. And then, you know, here's a, you know, the gradations of autonomies. So our androids have several levels of the autonomies, from zero to full. And there are roughly three stages, you know, the, it's just the avatar to the fully autonomous one. But, the, you know, the important what point... What do you mean? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, the best things, you know, the, the most important things is, the, you know, the full autonomous is not always the best one. So each degree of autonomy has each specific role in some real you know, environment. Now, for example, in Hiroshi on stage, He's an avatar of Hiroshi, actual Hiroshi, sorry, and he has no intelligence. We call it a teleoperated robot. He's no intelligence, but still the robots, the androids, can behave as an avatar of someone's, you know, someone's you know, on behalf of the someone's. So this is the, you know, the first experiment of the, the avatars, you know, Geminoids as avatars. And you know, actual Hiroshi is operated, you know, behind him. And his, you know, the uh, facial expressions and the behavior is captured by the webcams, and then whole information is in transfer back to that robot in real time. So, Hiroshi, do you remember that? I remember this. Yeah. It was the first time I was used publicly as an avatar. This was 10 years ago. Time flies. <laughs> yeah, time flies. He remember that. That's good thing. So, as I said, so our robots have several, you know, the stages of the autonomies. So that's, you know, robots is represented by the Geminoids, zero autonomies, and half autonomy, Minami, and full autonomous one is Erika. Tell me about oh. Minami. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for guiding my talk. Minami is a half autonomous robot. Then Minami can react to the, some person's behavior without in some, any, you know, the human cell operations. So, we put the Minami inside the display window in the department store, Takashimaya department store, on the Valentine's Day. And she's waiting for her boyfriend inside the show windows. 
Yeah. I believe you developed the intelligent system inside her that enables Minami to react to visitors that enter the store. You know a lot, yes. So, this event is kind of a special event on Valentine's Day. It means that she's waiting for her boyfriend. You know, she's waiting for her boyfriend inside the display windows. And some, when someone approaches to her, she looks at that person, oh, my boy's coming. And not my boy, and she going back to the original position, and she's waiting for her boyfriend for two weeks without any complaints. It's better than humans, yeah. And of course, she has oh, more. Hey, yeah, what sorry. about Erica? Oh, Erica! I heard rumors that she can talk with her own intelligence. Hello there. May I ask your name? My name is Ignacio. Ignacio, is that right? Yes. It's nice to meet you, Ignacio. So, as you can see, the Erika is a full autonomous one. And she can understand what the people said, and she can have some react, you know, some kind of answer without any pre-written script. But the Erika has one problem, that is, the Erika works only in the laboratories. We've been, you know, we have not able to you know, bring Erika in an outside of the lab. Yeah, to bring Erika to the outside, we have to overcome some several challenges. The first challenge is the human-like behaviors. You know, the human beings have over 100 muscles to express the, you know, the facial expressions. But in the case of the android, for example, in the Hiroshi, he's a, one of the most sophisticated android in the world, but the, still Hiroshi has about the 10 to 12 you know, degrees of freedom to express the facial expressions due to the, some mechanical limitations, you know, in the space of the head. Even his head, you know, head is a little bit bigger, but uh, still it's not, you know, enough space to put more in actuators. The second one is the voice recognitions. So with a Siri, you know, Siri, you know, now, now the voice recognition system is, you know, going to be integrated in our daily life, but it still doesn't work enough well in you know, the outside, even if, especially, in a conversation with humans and androids. For example, in a, for example, in a department store, like Minami case, it's quite noisy. It's too much background noise. And then I think the current you know, voice recognition system doesn't work. And second reason is the language. So when the people have some conversation with Android, so they start you know, using a very, very, you know, talking style, you know, you know, very natural talking style way. So for example, they start using a slang or some abbreviations or strong dialect. So because the, you know, the robot is very human-like, so that they start using that kind of thing. So it's kind of detectable well right now. And third one is a discourse generation problem. So the Android is human-like, so that the people you know, expect that robot can have a you know, very lively and human-like conversations. Okay, to achieve the very natural discourse, we, have, we need some enormous amount of you know, the conversation, you know, some examples. It, it's not enough to. So due to three reasons, we have still far from being able to you know, integrate the robots in our daily societies without being reminded all the time that we are dealing with machine. So that's to overcome that challenges. The, our solution is you know, selection-based conversation systems. What does that mean? <laughs> so selection-based conversation system is a kind of a supporting system you know, that for the conversation between human and robot. You know, in this system, we put the touch panel display in front of the users with showing the, some reaction options. And the people choose one of them, and the system voices the chosen one. The androids then react to the chosen one. You know, so this is a kind of a guided talk between human and android. You know, understand? Not sure I get it. Sorry. <laughs> so let me show you the examples. 
So, yeah, this is the you know, first experiment as a shopkeeper robot, the shopkeeper Minami. And as you can see, in the touch panels in front of the Minamis, and the guys, you know, have some conversation through that touch panel, you know, touch panel conversation systems. And this experiment, the Minamis try to sell their, some, you know, rather expensive Kashimiya sweaters to the customers. It's a price is about, you know, 200 US dollars. It's not so cheap. It means that she need to convince them to buy the product, and she need to, you know, have some real conversation. So the result is like this: the Minami sales rank is six, you know, out of 25 humans shopkeepers in the same floor. That's a great result, right? And the important point is, no one behind her, no operators. It's it's autonomous. And in the morning, I came to that department store and turned the switch, turned on the switch, and she started you know, selling the goods without any complaint <laughs> for 12 days, right? That's very, it's very good. How did this happen? So now we narrow it down to two reasons why the Minami ranks the very, very good, pretty good result. The first one is their selection-based conversation system is a, you know, in a, in, a, in a selection conversation system, the customers choose one of them by their own will. And it means their decision making is not enforced by the shopkeepers. You know, they feel their decision making at, from their own will. Okay? And second one is the human beings are you know, receptive or more open to accepting the message from Android as opposed to the humans, even if that message is too much positive. You know, for example, in that experiment, the Minami sometimes says, oh, you are so handsome, but if you buy and wear that Kashimiya Sita, you become more handsome. <laughs> Something like that, okay? Okay, please imagine, if the human shopkeeper told you like this, I think you, you trust it. I think you feel some, that, you know, humans, it's, it's, that message is not genuine, right? But in a case, you know, when the androids say that kind of words, the human can accept that word because androids never bias. It's not bias, never tell a lie, and it's, it's always objective, right? So it means, you know, by using these systems, we can give them some idea or story to the customers to, for you know, purchasing the goods. Okay, and this is a pretty successful experiment. But as a next step, we came up with an, another idea. That is, we try to apply that, you know, the selection-based conversation system for the human-human communications. In the human-human communications, first, as a first step, we created the ideal story for female and male who didn't know each other, right? So, you know, creating a good relationship or some intimate relationship for the, you know, first-minute person is always hard. But by using some ideal story to, you know, connecting the good relationship, yes, their, you know, their communications make it more easier, right? And we tested that system for the human-human communication in there, and we, and we we conducted two experiments in the two big tech festivals. And one is the South by Southwest 2016 in US, Austin. So. I really stayed sick for a long time. I think you are also well known. How do you do that? You're disgusting. Seriously. In a very, you know, first, you know, timing, so they're talking about very negative things. But afterwards, so they forgive each other, and then they say some positive things. You know, the positive word after negative words is quite effective to create the good relationships. So that's, we call it ideal stories. And then after that, so, 
the, the man, you know, asked her to drink outside, and then she accepted it. So that experiment is quite successful, too. Okay, so these two experiments show that the selection-based conversation system for the humans also works so well. So this is because there, it's a similar to the androids, you know, case. But the different point is, you know, we prepare the ideal stories to connect the human each others, but that story is not the real one. It's it's a given one, you know, for the peoples. It's not, in, not given by the system, but even if it's a given, given you know stories, but they can feel and accept as their own experiment. So it means that we can share the ideal stories. It's sharing ideal stories. They can you know, accept that idea, given idea story as their own stories. So we could help you connect to each other more easily? Yes, your first, you know, first learner, thank you. <laughs> the Android studies mean to be, you know, connecting technologies. And the Android is a robot, not for manufacturing, but it's for our societies. You know, in the future, the Androids will interact with us and we will interact with them. Right? So this technology never stops. You know, this technology is going, you know, improved, whether we like it or not. Right? I think, yes, you feel some scared and some, some wrong feelings about it. But the best way to avoid some negative consequences is to engage with the androids. We are not meant to sell you sweaters. We can assist doctors, help in relief efforts, and take care of people who are sick. After all, isn't time one of our most valuable assets? I can help you gain time as well. Yes, so that's why I'm working on Android study. So I believe the androids make world more better or make help people more happier. So with like all technologies, you know, we you know, carefully consider some ethical or some social some consequences. But the Android study is a great chance to start thinking or discussing those you know, ethical or you know, social you know, issues. The Android future will depend on those who use the Android. I hope it will be all of you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.